going today, Paul? Great, Glenn. Yeah. Thanks for coming to see us. <laughs> no worries. I just love coming here. There's always some new exciting tech, and uh, this is the most exciting tech I've seen in a long time. Uh, good to see you. Happy. <laughs> <laughs> um, tell me a little bit about these batteries. I mean, they're so big. Where did you get these from? Uh, we actually designed and built them right here in Mitcham. So we use um, as many local ingredients as we can get, and uh, we build them here with our own team. Uh, they all have individual cell level monitoring and their own remote circuit breaker inside. So every single one of these batteries you can look at remotely? Yeah, and every cell and every battery for life. Every cell? Yep, so it's all recorded locally on the mach on the devices, it's record recorded on the server here and it's off site as well. So why would you need to know every cell? Well every cell has a warranty, such as the whole system has a warranty, so knowing what's happening to every cell all the time allows us to give longer warranties because we can know when something's working and not working. Cool. So Paul, when I turned up today, I noticed the container was white. Was it just the colour it came in? It came as a nice beige colour and we painted it with a special paint. And the paint is infrared reflective and it has ceramic in it. And it's uh, very cool to touch in full sun. So we actually did a test uh, about two weeks ago. Uh, it was 41 degrees and uh, we actually measured the temperature outside the container and inside the container uh, for the entire day. And we turned off the fans, the air conditioning, and we just had the inverters on, on base load, so they were making a bit of their own natural heat. And uh, we found the temperature inside only got up to about 32, degree, 32 degrees Celsius uh, with 41 degrees outside, and that's just the thermal gain through the skin of the container, which is extremely good. Ah, oh, amazing. And, and you mentioned that you touched the hinge and it was hot. Why, is, why was that? Yeah, so it, the hinge wasn't painted, so if you touch the hinge, it's just what metal normally does in full sun, and it got very hot, it's hard, too hot to touch. But touching the skin of the container, it was cool. It was the most bizarre thing ever. Wow. So it really does reflect heat. I don't know how it doesn't, but you can probably Google it. So you've treated the outside of the container. What about the inside? So inside the container wall, we've actually built a steel frame inside the container, and it's thermally broken from the outside. So we do that by using nylon ties between the inside frame and the outside skin. So we don't get any thermal bridging. So we've reduced the thermal transfer of energy through those thermal bridges by getting rid of the steel connectivity. Then we put um, a couple of layers of bubble wrap triple layer uh, foil backed insulation in between the inside wall and the outside wall so that any heat getting through that paint through the metal gets reflected back and then it has to try and get through all the other insulation and onto the inside. And that's quite a small distance, isn't it? You could be yeah, we, we wanted to have, it was almost like the TARDIS. Yes. <laughs> Bigger, as, as big as possible on the inside. Mm -hmm. And so we didn't want to lose any width because we needed wide corridors to meet standards. And we didn't want to lose space to put batteries. So we got the internal wall only about uh, 15 millimetres away from the outside wall. And we um, built a system that, that, that dealt with that. I know RVO build and design passive house. Is this a passive house container? More or less it is, yeah. All the principles for passive house are in here. Uh, we have fresh air supply using fans, we have thermal bridge free design, uh, and we have extremely good insulation. And the super paint. And the super paint, yeah. <laughs> wow, well, it certainly works. Um, it's, it's very impressive. Um, so in terms of um, the cost of electricity, this is something people often ask is, you know, when you invest in energy storage, uh, what is the levelized cost of energy when you consider the lifespan of these batteries? Well, it depends on how many cycles per day you do. So it's not really a, it's an elastic number. Mm -hmm. if, I, if I only ever discharge this system once per week, I probably would have been better to put lead acid batteries in because I don't need cycle life. But because this container is probably going to do two or maybe three full cycles per day because of the site it's going to, um, over 10 years that's 10 or 11,000 cycles, 20 years that's 20, 25,000 cycles. So we want to have batteries that can do a lot of cycles because we don't know where this container is going to end up next. It's designed to last a really long time. So everything in here is designed to last around 20 to 30 years. And so we say the design life is 20 plus years for the whole system. Wow, that's, that's really impressive. Um, now inside these uh, batteries are lithium titanate cells. Now I've heard that they're considered the safe lithium. Tell me more about that. Yeah, they are. They're very safe. Um, you can cut them with a saw, you can drill them, you can put a nail through them, and they don't burst into flames. Wow. Which is a big plus. That's when you amazing. have so many cells and so much storage, uh, safety is a big thing. Because obviously the bigger you go, the more systems you build, the more probability that there'll be a problem. 
So starting with the safer cell technology, it was my, it's my biggest prerogative. Now, I notice there's a lot of cables and wires looking down here. What's all this about? So each of the batteries has its own Ethernet port. So we actually power the communications to the battery. Every battery has its own cooling fan as well. So if we want to run really high powered modes, we can blow fresh air through the battery. Um, we've got an alarm wire here as well. So let's just say there was a fault somewhere and the inverter was charging and overcharging the cells because someone programmed it incorrectly. Uh, and then that, the comms went off because lightning hit and took the comms out. Then each battery can still send a, a control signal to the inverters to turn off directly as a, as a, as a manual signal, independent of comms. Additionally, if that failed and the inverter still didn't turn off and they kept charging, the battery can trip itself off the, the battery bus duct if any cell it goes over the voltage allowed. So it automatically just throws the circuit breaker and trips itself off this bus duct. So it's got intrinsic safety and multi-levels of fail at safe. Yeah, multi-levels because we want a dual redundancy for everything. For cooling, yeah. for lighting, for uh, battery power, for energy, everything. Right. Well, now that you've built this, what's it going to be used for? Uh, this is actually going to be powering the coal mine. Ha! <laughs> uh, the coal mines, I mean, everyone who works in the coal industry or the oil industry, they still got kids. They care about the planet too. You might think they must be bad because they work in this uh, non-clean energy environment, but they're actually really great people and they want the best for the planet as well. And part of their prerogative is to try and transition across to cleaner fuels. And this is one of the first sites they're going to be doing where they're actually powering all their admin buildings, workshops and uh, lighting around the site all of solar power instead of diesel power. So to run me through the raw numbers in terms of the generation is going to be how much? Uh, on this system we're going to be connecting 100 kilowatts of solar power through these uh, Fronius inverters and they'll produce around about 500 kilowatt hours per day as an average in this particular site and um, the site is consuming around about 600 kilowatt hours per day at the moment but they're actually in the process of doing some uh, efficiency upgrades on lighting and a few other things so that'll probably drop to 500. So it'll probably be about net energy neutral. We're storing 250 kilowatt hours. So that means that we'll probably have to call upon the generator every second day for maybe 20 minutes or so, instead of 24 hours per day. And because the batteries can charge so fast, we don't have to have the generator running for very long. We can just turn it on full power and fill up the batteries to maybe halfway and then turn the generator off again. So you're kind of putting the generator out to pasture? It'll still be there, but it's just there for the final mile. Yeah. Because we can't predict what they might need to use in the middle of winter, it might be a storm. Yeah. They've still got the same loads and there's no sunshine. So the generator's there as a backup. Cool. Now I noticed that the batteries have little blue lights all on them. What's all that about? They do. So the, the indicator lights help us to do maintenance and also can show what data charge they are. That's fully controllable RGB LED and we, we control it for our software. So if we had a technician who had to come along and check a cell or a battery, we could just turn that battery to red and he could find it more easily. Right, so from remote monitoring, you can identify a problem battery or cell, you can identify it visually, and a local field technician could come out and remove that. That's right, and you can also see on the security cameras that, that the light's on as well, so you know that it's working when you send a signal to it. Another level of redundancy. And you can then trip it remotely as well. So we can turn that battery off remotely if we find that something's wrong, and we don't want to lose the whole site. We only need six batteries to keep the site alive, and if we lose one out of 42, it's almost not undetectable. So you're kind of seven times oversized for redundancy. A lot of redundancy here, yeah. <laughs> well, look, I'm super impressed by this, and it's a, just a beautiful build. I've been watching it uh, being constructed over some, some months now, and uh, super impressed. So thanks for letting me have a look at it. Sure, great. Thanks, Clint. Okay, see ya. Bye.